For some people, the desire to lose weight can become an obsession. But what happens when their method of dieting causes serious damage to their body? that you have rehearsal after school. Make sure you test before will, rehearsal. Mom. Okay, right, I'll see you have a home. good day. In her freshman year of high school, Erin Akers looks forward to acting in the school's theater program and also working on the school newspaper. But as a type one diabetic, she has some personal issues. I hated the way that I looked, and I hated my body, and I hated how much I weighed. I also hated being diabetic. I hated having to take insulin every day, and I hated being different than the other kids in my class. As a type 1 diabetic, Erin needs to monitor her blood sugar levels daily and take insulin to keep her blood sugar from getting too high. But during her freshman year, she learned that by not taking her insulin, she is able to lose weight. When I first figured out that by skipping my insulin, I could lose weight, I felt like I had discovered some sort of hidden secret. But there is a heavy price to pay. By not taking insulin, Erin's body begins to shut down. She suffers from dehydration, extreme fatigue, and nausea. My day-to-day -day life became more about how to get around with as little insulin as possible. Ugh. And so I was nauseous all the time. I was exhausted. I was sleeping for 16 hours a day. I wouldn't even call it living life. I was barely surviving life. Sometimes Erin becomes so dehydrated she is taken to the hospital to receive intravenous fluids. It is common for type 1 diabetics to have a low immune system. And this is the excuse Erin gives the doctors. It never occurred to any of them that I could possibly be doing this on purpose because who would do that? Who would purposely make themselves feel this awful this often? Erin lies to everyone about skipping her insulin. She lies to her doctors, to her friends, and to her family. When was the last time you took your insulin? Four hours ago. I don't think so. Four hours ago, you were in rehearsal. I'm trying, OK? Not OK. I don't think you're trying. You weren't in school yesterday. Yeah, but. Oh, my you're... God, no, I can't know. At first, I thought it was just adolescence. We had had a number of doctors tell us that she was a rebellious teen, she was a non-compliant diabetic. Um, I can't tell you how many different parenting classes we went to uh, to learn how to deal with a difficult child, none of which worked because that wasn't the issue. The issue was she had a mental health disorder that was undiagnosed. I'm sorry, it's not my fault. I don't know what you want me to do. By skipping her insulin for days at a time, Erin becomes depressed and angry, and often takes it out on her mother. I'm the one that's sick. You can go now. Erin, we have to actually you can go, Mom. I think it's really hard for any parent to watch their child suffer, especially since we couldn't get a handle on what was going on to help make her better. Despite her fatigue, her nausea, and her depression, Erin continues on the same path, not taking her insulin in order to keep her weight down. Life didn't matter to me unless I was skinny, because if I couldn't be skinny, I didn't want to be alive anyways. Oh my gosh, Erin, you look great. Thanks, Ashley. You're welcome. So jealous. During her high school years, Erin Akers is able to achieve three main goals. She keeps her weight down, which impresses her friends. She also is the lead actress in several school plays. And she's an editor for her school newspaper. 
Erin is given permission by her school to work from home due to her low immune system, a common symptom among type 1 diabetics. But what is unknown to everyone is that Erin is causing her weakened condition by not taking her insulin, often going days without it. I had no idea I had an eating disorder. I wasn't making myself throw up and I wasn't starving myself, so I didn't have an eating disorder, you know? I was just not taking my insulin. But during her senior year, Erin betrays those very things she cherishes the most. On the night she is supposed to perform in her school's play, Erin is a no-show. She's sick in bed. Then she fails to meet an important deadline for her school newspaper. It was obvious in that moment. I no longer had control over it. It was now controlling me, and it had taken hold of my life. And finally, she misses her senior prom, spending that weekend in a hospital. I was in and out of consciousness. I mean, I barely remember those two days. Basically, I went in on, I think, a Thursday, and by Sunday, I was kind of fully aware again, and I, I had to look at my mom, and she just said, yeah, you missed prom. Soon after, Erin confesses to her mother that she has been intentionally skipping her insulin for the last four years. I love you so much. I love you too. There was a lot of crying that happened. Going to her and just saying, I need help. I can't control this anymore. I think mostly what I saw was relief and, and, and a great deal of sadness. Getting help for her condition is not easy as no one seems to know the right solution. The diabetes world said, well, this is an eating disorder problem. And the eating disorder world said, this is a diabetes problem. A lot of them just looked at me and said, you just need to take your insulin, just do it. As if it were that easy, as if I would have missed my senior prom by choice. Like it was something I could just switch on and off. While watching a daytime TV show, Aaron hears a discussion about type one diabetics in which they describe an eating disorder called diabolemia. Astounded, Erin discovers that there's a term for her condition. Being able to label it meant that it was real for me. And it also meant that I had something to bring into doctors and say, look, this is a thing. Erin and her mother find a service that will provide the treatment and therapy she'll need. Finally, Erin can start on a road to recovery. If you suspect someone has diabolemia, what do you do? There are certain symptoms to look for, such as sudden weight loss despite a healthy appetite. Do they display extreme mood swings? And are they always fatigued? Diabolemia is a new term in the medical world, and not all doctors are familiar with this condition. So you may need to be persistent to find the right medical help. Today, Erin Akers is back in school, pursuing a master's degree. She has also formed a nonprofit organization aimed at helping type 1 diabetics with this eating disorder. It's called the diabolemiahelpline.org. As it turns out, there are many type 1 diabetics with this same affliction, and 34% of them die from it. Type 1 diabetes shouldn't be a death sentence in our day and age, and for so many young women and men, it still is. It was a hard road. I don't want anybody to think that you go off for three months of treatment and you come back and you're all better. It's an arduous journey uh, with ups and downs, two steps forward, one step back, but it is so worth getting your daughter back in the end. 